Okay, so in this demo, what I'm going to be showing you guys is really how to compile a bunch of different pieces from Maya into After Effects. Now, this is something I think a lot of people um, kind of ignore when it comes to rendering. It's that power of After Effects, that power of using a post-processing uh, piece of software to uh, compile a lot of really simple pieces into one final look. Now, if we were to do something uh, like this, loop that so all we see here is if we break down what the images are some floating cookies we have the main cookie rotating around we have some text coming in and that's pretty much it so that's kind of the idea that we're going for with our intro you don't have to do exactly like this but um, pretty simple elements that um, are being used here to do that and so what I ended up doing in Maya is similar ideas of breaking down uh, elements to render out and have show up. And you can see, not the most exciting baking show ever, cookie. Uh, but this should allow for me to be able to render these out and then have some components to use. So instead of using an entire background with foreground elements and, and all these other crazy things going on, um, we all know from rendering that we lose control when you have more, more complex stuff. So by doing a more simple approach where we're going to render out assets individually and then apply effects to them in After Effects, we allow ourselves to kind of rest more easily and also allow ourselves to instance geometry and use uh, some um, of the magic After Effects is really powerful with. So uh, here's an example of that with what I ended up doing using uh, After Effects and uh, the... Um, Maya renders, and we'll break this down today. Just want to show you some, some of the ideas of this right here. So if I hit, let this play through of the audio, so we'll render. Um, first thing you realize is that bottom bar, or this green bar, that's caching. It's putting together all of our pieces here. And I don't know who this lady is, I just have her in here. Uh, I'm putting together a final render of green screen person and, and foreground person, all that stuff. Uh, let's look at this, what this is doing here one last time with audio. Oh! So that's like a cheesy intro for a cookie show, right? So that's kind of what we are going for. Um, right now inside of my After Effects timeline, I have this gingerbread intro and an interview. If I look at what that actually is, I'll double click on that. It's this lady um, who is talking. Uh, she was too close to the background, so you can still see that there's some fuzz on the edges. So we'll make sure we don't do that next uh, class. When we get back, we'll be filming. So make sure next class you have uh, some dialogue ready to go for recording. Um, you do not need to be the chef in your scene. It could be somebody else that wants to do that, but we need a person to talk or a puppet, that's fine too. Um, so lots of great poses she's got going on here. So um, Background though, we'll talk about this next class and how to not have that happen. But as we can see inside of our uh, project folder, I have a video of her. I have a bunch of audio tracks in here. And I have things like the Gingy Spin and my other um, compositions inside of my project. So I'm going to break down from scratch how we do this, but let's first look at um, the final piece again. If I just double click on my gingerbread intro. Oh, okay, so it's a little more complicated than what um, the intro part was with just a render. However, this is super simple to do. I have one video here, which is this part. And this, all I did was render it out and if I double click on that sequence I'll double click right here you can see it right here that's the sequence with the transparency in the background I've added that to this right here 
So it's rotating. I have a scale and rotation applied to this. So it just moves in. And when the audio comes in, I've, I've supplied for you guys some um, places to download terrible Muzak. Um, so that way you can use that. Uh, but in here. Oh, right at the end. The dun, 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 boom. I have that zoom in a little bit more just to give some more flavor and some more excitement to it to emphasize the name of this project. So if we hide that layer, what's behind it? Well, I got a bunch of candy canes and some out of focus gingerbread people. So how are those created? Right here I have this thing. It's called Gingy Spin. And if I double click on Gingy Spin, what I got is a spinning gingerbread person. And that's all it's doing. It's just looping around and spinning. What a great way to live. Um, now, why I ended up rendering this out instead of giving it just a single render with uh, an image was because you will notice it's very subtle, but I actually have a warm and cool light on my gingerbread person as it spins. This light is staying in the same location, although it's illuminating different spots on my character as it rotates around. It makes it for more dynamic look to my piece. So I got the ginger spins, which sounds like a disease. Uh, the ginger spins, it's from eating too much gingerbread on holiday. There we go. It's a candy cane spinning. So you can get the idea. We're just making some simple things. The render time on these, it's like five minutes, five minutes. And then all of a sudden you have all these things that we can start to use to build up this composition. So this final composition that had this intro in it, I have my foreground where I have animated text coming in and some holly popping in. And then I have my ginger spin and another ginger spin and a candy cane. Each one of these things I have applied a very subtle effect to it. Let me turn off the lock on here and open this up. My effects, I have a drop shadow. So what's that drop shadow doing? Let's turn that off and on. Just that. It's just adding a little bit of um, depth to the piece. And it's also got some brightness and contrast because this is the original render. I've changed the brightness. I'll show you how I do this. The brightness and the contrast there. And I also have a Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur is pretty subtle. It's very little on that one, but on this guy right here, let's see what we got right there. And if I open up my effects, Gaussian blur, just a little bit to push in the background. So it gives some more depth to this. That is really, really nice for us to be able to work with this because we have a entire scene that is now being produced that, you know, there's a lot of different moving elements. So, um, and this feels like one of those corny intros that we just saw. So how do we put this all together? If I make a new project, all right, I'm going to import. So I'm going to right click and go to import file. I've got all this stuff in here for me. So some of the stuff I have is some music. So I'll import these um, videos and this music right here. I'm going to import my sequences. So I'm going to go to File and then go to my Images. And I have my gingerbread intro. I only need to have that first one, Import. So there's that intro file. I'll go to Import again. And I have an icon that you haven't seen yet. We'll add that. I'm going to go into here and also go into my gingerbread rotate. And I'm going to go in one more time. And I'm going to go into my candy cane. And that's going to be a rotate as well. So I have all these different assets. And so first thing I need to do, I'm just going to double check and look at these things. Let me hit the play button. Oh, hello. So there's some gingerbread people hanging out, just popping up and waving around. So that's cool. Um, I have that one that we already saw. And right here I have my gingerbread spin. Now, I have all these things. I'm ready to start to work. What I need to do is actually go into composition, new composition. And I'm going to set that up. Uh, yeah, let's say 1920 by 1080. That is good. We will go okay. And from here, 
Actually, these are all not rendered at that size. Let's go composition, new composition. Uh, 960, because I'm cheating. All right, for sake of time rendering um, this out, I made it smaller. Uh, the full res is what we should do for the, the our final. Um, I'm gonna go into my first piece I want. So I'm gonna actually make a background. So I'm gonna go to new, solid. And that's a cool color, this, this kind of greeny thing. So, oh, okay, a little bright. Let's try to add a gradient to this. I'm gonna type in gradient and try to type it like a person. Okay, so I got four color gradient, I got a gradient ramp. Let's try, try a four color for this one. Ooh, that looks gross. Let's change that so it's less uh, saturated in, in, you know, Pukeville. So we're gonna go into here. And this one right here, let's go into maybe a little bit like that. And then on the bottom, cool. And then over here, maybe it's just, just a little bit less saturated. So that's pretty cool. Now what's really cool about this is these gradients have a lot that we can do with it. Since it's After Effects, we can move this. It's time-based media, or a time-based medium. So I can change where some of these lights are going. And I can actually set the keyframe on that. If I wanted to move those things around, I can press this button um, on my stopwatch and I can change the location. So if I wanted that one, uh, which is right over here, this one right here, if I set the stopwatch here, move forward in time. So I go to 10 uh, seconds and then I move this. Whoa, not that one. Let's move that over to here. I'll hit this. Uh, the stopwatch has already been clicked for me. And now that's going to move that those lights around. So oohs and ahs, not really that, that great, right? So we can go ahead and do that with this one too. I'm gonna hit the uh, control on this one and then let's say that around 10 seconds too, I'll bring this one over. Um, I'll press this button to get my uh, cursor, my crosshairs for it and go over to the, there. So now all of a sudden I have some lights changing around the background. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one too. So for the color three, I'll click that button. And then at 10 seconds, I'm gonna move that I don't know. Cool, over there. So I have now, oh, it helps if you're caffeinated when you work with this. I need to move the point. So I'm gonna actually click on the point and then go to 10 seconds. And now, now if I go click here, click here, it's gonna move that around. So pretty neat. Last but not least, let's get that last one, that blue one. I'm gonna go and click on point four and now at 10 seconds um i don't know let's go one two three let's go over there we'll move it somewhere else okay so now we should have just some some movement to this super subtle because it is 10 seconds long however also, I noticed it looks like a trippy effect on your screens because there's some banding on there. That's not what's actually occurring um, on uh, the main, the final part. So, um, okay, so we have that going on. It's pretty nice. It's not, it's not the most beautiful um, effect, but I think that's fine for our gingerbread people and the sign to exist on it. So that's good. Let's let's say that that's that's it for this. So where do we get back to our project? All of a sudden, our effect is here, but we don't see the project. Well, I'll click on these arrows, go to project, and now we have the rest of this that we can work with. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's actually, let's bring in a new composition. I'm gonna make another one of these. I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna bring in the gingerbread person. And that gingerbread person goes for a total of two seconds. That's not a long time. So let's make this longer. I'm gonna take this, Control C, Control V, and I'm gonna move this one over. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and drag it over. Now it's twice as long. Let's grab both of these and then move these, hold down Shift and drag. And now it's even longer. And now we can make that even longer and paste and make that even longer. Nope, I'm breaking things. There we go, so let's fix this, okay. So now, hold on, shift, snap. That one doesn't wanna listen. 
we're gonna get that there okay so I have all of these so this is now 16 seconds um sort of let's see if this plays all right that's not the footage where's gingerbread footage there you are okay so now this should play through and we should probably call this something so I'm gonna rename this as uh, ginger rotate and this will be our um, bumper intro so now I'm gonna double click on bumper intro to get back into this one you'll actually notice your compositions right here so now that I have bumper intro selected I'm actually gonna grab my ginger rotate and drag that into this one this is referred to as nesting so was it Matryoshka or whatever those dolls are that you rip them apart and there's just more of them? It's just the way science works with people too. You just rip one in half, there's another one in there. It's great. Um, so that's that idea where we have um, something inside of something else. So nesting things is very, very easy. Um, it's just a matter of making a composition and dragging it into another one. Why it's helpful for us is because now we don't have this really um, dirty and disorganized layer to work in, we can mess with our ginger rotate if we need to. We also have just it representing right here. So we don't have all of that extra stuff that we saw right here. That's complicated. This is not. And so we have that rotating. So now that we have our little person rotating around, let's modify it because it seems a little bit uh, too center stage. So let's change our contrast. I'm going to go on here and type in contrast and I'm gonna go brightness contrast on it just drag that right into or on top of ginger rotate and now I'm gonna increase my brightness there we go that's all I needed now let's type in a drop shadow so drop shadow and drag that in and the one thing like if this is the last time you ever see me ever again the one thing I want in your mind, what color should shadows never be? Thank you. For the love of God, thank you. Okay, yes, because it's just, it, like, look at how digital that looks, right? It's this gray piece of garbage. You just want to set it on fire and watch this thing scream for years, right? So you don't want that. We want this to be happy. Um, let's give it a different color. I'm maybe going to use just like an off, whatever this color, like greenish, bluish color. If I had brain cells left today, I'd know the term, but I'm okay with that. Okay, now let's hit play. Ooh, we got some shadows going on. Now, we see a really crisp edge on that. Let's fix that. We're just going to go and make it softer. There we go. And awesome. Now, if Maya had to deal with this, and we had Maya render freaking 16 seconds of a rotating gingerbread, uh, A, I'd be losing my mind. Um, because that's a long time to let this thing rotate um, and B why it, it's so much easier to just just knock out this little tiny piece and not have to worry about shadows and, and all these other things that we're adding in post so that's cool I've got that going on uh, he's too big so let's shrink him down Charlie Brown we're gonna go ahead and uh, scale it and then let's move him over all right now Let's hit play. Oh, let's make an army. But first, let's add, uh, what do you call it? Blur. So let's type in gauze, Gaussian blur, and drag it to him. And then blurriness, yes, please. And so now we have him kind of in the background, floating away. Um, he is in the uh, purgatory of gingerbread people before they're rebirthed on the, the, the baking she again only to live one more day and they'd be consumed all over again so um they're just thinking about life yeah that's that is their existence they are doomed to uh to live so all right so i actually have three of these which there's one there there's one here and then oh so i've got these i can change around the settings of these individually now so maybe my scale on some of these needs to be bigger. Now because I rendered that out at a large size, I can scale things up and down without having to worry about any of this starting to uh, glitch out um, or be super pixelated, right? 
So I can mess around with each of these. So there's Gingy rotate number two. Um, and I'm going to go into my transform and scale that up as well. And so now that I have all this, uh, let's see how this plays. Okay, boo. This is all rotating at the same exact time, right? So let's change this so that way they kind of feel like they're um, offset. To do that, it's actually pretty easy in After Effects. I'm just going to grab one of these and pull that over here. And then maybe this one goes a little bit like that. So now if I hit play, they're spinning at different um, intervals uh, wherever the rotation is. So pretty helpful. So I got three of these rotating around. Let's add in our candy canes. Let's go to import file. Oh no, we already have them. So we have our candy cane. Let's do the same thing. Let's go to composition, new composition. We'll call this candy cane. Wait, let's make it cool. With the K's instead of the C's. That's what everyone does. Replace an S with Z's, you know? Um, so we're going to go ahead and drag in, drag in, and drag this in, control C, control V, hold down shift so they snap this one, and then now one, two, whoop, whoop, one, two, three. It's fun to count things in threes. One, two, three, and then snap it. And then paste, oh, oh, make effects with your mouth when you're working in After Effects. It's mandatory. Oh, be surprised. Act like a child who's just discovered After Effects. Like, oh, they can do this with the technology? Okay, we're going to make this go right here. And then now if I play that beautiful cane footage, bam, it's rotating around and I'm good. Now this is rotating for 24 seconds, so that's good. There is another way that we can do this to make it looping, but it's more complex and I'd rather save you guys from all that. So we're gonna go back into bumper intro and then drag in that beautiful composition that I made called Candy Cane. So we're gonna drag that in with a K. All right, so now that I have this, I'm gonna make this do the same thing as my gingerbread people. I'm gonna go in here and then I'm just, right over effects, I'm gonna hit Control C and control V. Oh, 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 a little, a little blurry. Eggnog a little too early before the show's over. So let's, let's fix that. Let's root. Let's reduce that blurriness. There we go. He's okay. Okay. We got that. And now I'm going to take that candy cane footage and move it somewhere else. Uh, probably scale that down so I can scale it down in two different ways. I can do that inside of my transform. Every time I say transform, I think of Autobots roll out. Okay, there's a candy cane right there. I'm gonna put that up here. Maybe it's off screen a little bit. Now control C, control V. Or not, let's see. Let's get that candy cane, control C, control V. There we go. There's one over here. And paste. There's another one over there. Let's scale them up a little bit now. So there's a couple different sizes that we have. Okay, now here's a dilemma. They're all facing one direction. Great band. How do I change that? Watch this. I'm just going to take this and go whoop. There we go. And I just saved my life. Because now I don't have to render out another dumb candy cane, right? That would, that would be terrible. So now let's see the magic of... Oh, that's great. So we're getting there. We got some fun stuff going on. Hey, you know what's, what's Christmassy and stuff like that? Or holiday, I guess. It don't have to be Christmassy. It could be Pop. just holiday. Snow! Oh. Popcorn. popcorn. I've seen like the popcorn string is the tree. Oh, you make those? No. I don't either. <laughs> Does anyone do that? It's just too tempting to put food on a tree that's opened for... It's, it, it takes some time. To, to do that too, so. I feel like, you know, if it was good popcorn, it would just take the whole string. Yeah, just eat it. You just keep on. Yeah. If you do it with dental floss, you'll be actually making your dentist happy and you'll have a snack. That's how floss works, right? 
Okay, so I've got this. I'm gonna put snowfall on top. Oh, do you see this? Now, what happened to my background though? It's gone. That's okay. Let's fix this. I've got snow and I'm gonna make the size of these. It's a festive time of the year. There we go. Let's see how this is going. All right, that's going. The, the background's gone. Where do I put the background? How do I make that happen? Well, we can blend our layers in uh, After Effects just like in Photoshop. So if I right click on my layer and then go into blending mode, turn on add. <gasps> Pretty cool, right? I mean, for a couple seconds worth of spouting nonsense and some, some changes on that. So there it goes. It's, it's got some pizzazz. Let's, let's add the rest of the stuff in here. I've got my, um, where are you? There you are. Wait, are you, who are you? Which one do I need? This one. All right. I'm going to drag this in. I'm going to actually put that above my, um, other stuff and then we'll let it process as it comes in. Cookie. Yeah. That's, it kind of looks like stop motion. And I didn't mean to do that. It's just because I used a focus on my camera and I wasn't very good at it. It, it kind of gave a soft focus to it. So now, cookie. Now let's make this look better than that. First thing we're gonna do, let's have it so, um, we'll make it zoom in. So maybe at around uh, one second, we can see where our second is right here. Boom. We'll have that here. And I'm going to make it from a scale of zero. So zero, I'll hit scale. And then at about maybe here, we'll give it 100% or not 1,000. There we go. And so now, let's see what's going on with our animation. So we'll hit play. Okay, we should make that not be that fast. So let's move this uh, keyframe. Cool. Now, let's add a little rotate. So we'll start a rotation maybe like this. Can't see it yet. Let's see. It's, oh, it's like that. And then let's even it out. So let's go from there to zero. And then now... Cool. Now I want to add just a little bit more oomph to it. I want to have it so when this thing comes in and that, these, uh, what are they called? Holly berry things pop up. I want those to um, be emphasized with the um, scale of this entire piece. So to do that, I'm going to back this train up a little bit and I'm going to set another keyframe. I'm going to add a keyframe, just right clicking, add keyframe. So this is just a hold keyframe. And then once, let's see, it's going to be right around there. I'm going to add just a bit of a scale here and then bring that back down to 100 again. Let's see what I did with this. So Bam! Cool! And it just keeps on going. So we have the beginnings of something fun. Now this is going to keep going and going and going for a long time. So how do I fix that? Let's actually end that wherever this is. This is saying that this is going to be 502. Alright, so let's drag this over. And let's also go to my end of my composition, which is over here. Let's, that's the one I meant to grab. And I wanna, I'm holding down shift, I'm gonna snap it to there, and now it's just gonna end at that same spot. So let's zoom in so we can actually see it better. All right, now let's work with some audio and add some music. So let's, let's listen to some sound here. Oh no, I did it. I brought in some bells. So we're going to add that into our um, 
thing. So let's add that to the bottom. Let's just, there we go. From the window to the walls, man, we're gonna deck these halls. You guys ready to, to finish this up? You guys don't know, Never mind. I thought I made a good, good. All right, let's see. All right, yeah, this is pretty loud. If you're wearing headphones, um, Santa can't hear too well, so and that's because of them sleigh bells. All right, let's listen to this one. I know, we just re re ruined it with this. It accelerates. Yeah. How fast can we go? Let's let's move forward on this because I'm yeah. It, that's a fake trumpet. There we go. So all right. So 34 seconds to 30, 38 seconds. All right. Let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna bring that in to my bumper intro here, and then yes. That's, let's go, I'm, I'm just gonna wing it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do the cheesiest way to, to move this around. I'm just left click dragging this over and then I'm gonna. Okay. Almost. It's coming up. It's going to be around here. So I'm going to just left click drag this over to there. And then now. Okay. So the audio is a little bit late, right? So let's just move this over. So that's where the audio, the bump is coming. So let's see if we can visually see that bump. Let's turn on waveform. There's the bump. So we can even see it right there. So if that's where that's happening, but that bump visually is happening right here, we just have to move this over. So it's around here. Let's see what that does now. Oh. All right, I like that. So we'll move that bump to there. So we'll move this. Here we go, ready? Whatever. Um, so it's getting there. We have to just tweak some stuff. Now you'll notice at the end, it sort of kind of keeps on lingering that audio. So what we could do is kill that audio level. So maybe by the end of this, this needs to have an audio level of a negative. So, First we'll go maybe at around here, set a keyframe, and then at the end, bring it down. Negative 192 is as far as it goes, and let's see what that does. Too long. So, Okay, we're getting close to there. Um, but that even that's too abrupt. So we can increase that a little bit more. So we're starting to fade that out. If there's audio effects, I'm just showing an easy way to change that. So with some more finesse on that, that can get better. Um, so now I have all this stuff and this is my um, bumper intro. For now, for the sake of time, I can keep finessing this. I'm, I'm gonna say this is fine. Uh, I would polish it up obviously for submission. Um, let me save my file. So I would just save that as the Christmas cookie intro or whatever the heck you were calling that. Um, and then now I'm going to go into creating a new composition. This comp now can be the intro or the interview. Interview. Okay. So let's bring in that lady who's talking about something. Where is she? There she is. Wake up. That's better. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, 
is scale her down because this was I think a full HD video and there we go so she's here talking about something I'm not even sure what she's talking about but that's okay I'm gonna type in key over in my effects and I'm gonna look for key light and I'm gonna sample this and I'm gonna turn off un pre multiply it actually cleans up a little bit of this other stuff there now you'll notice there's ways to make zombies and things like that by messing with uh, you can find out how makeup is made by seeing this too like oh it's horrifying so it is very scary uh, we're gonna leave I think that was actually at 50 yeah we're gonna leave that alone because we made a demon um, and you'll notice there, there's some gain that we can ha mess with. When we go too high, so at first you're gonna notice the halo. You go higher with this, it's gonna go away, but it's gonna start to cut into certain areas and look gross. Reception from all of our guests, all of our family and friends. So now it's starting to get better. Um, I'm gonna say this is fine and we're gonna do another one of those same ideas from our bumper intro. I'm gonna take this whole thing and I'm going to nest it into my interview. So to do that, let me make sure I'm in my project. I'm going to go into my, um, actually, let me do this. I'm going to go bumper intro and composition. Let's just grab, I'm not going to nest it. I'm actually just grab this background. So turquoise solid, I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go into interview and paste and move that underneath. So now she's talking and there's some moving lights, which is pretty nice. And then now, let's bring in this one. So I'm gonna bring this into the top. Okay, so this is gonna be my little looping, um, like, signal uh, for the, the, the broadcast network. And to do that, I'm gonna move it down with my transform. And so I'll move this over in the bottom and I will also scale it. You guys have all seen these super annoying like little pop-ups that happen on these videos. Usually they're about this big. Now, I don't know what's happening here. Um, that's uh, I can take this video, if I don't like that the she's over on this side, I can flip that. So let's take the, uh, the video just like how we had the candy cane and whoop. Oh, it's fun house. Okay, so I just moved that over and now, yes, technically she's backwards. Um, she's not gonna play backwards for audio, but. So everything we had done, we did. Here. She's distracted. The reception from all of our guests, Excuse all me. of our family and friends. So um, you're going to have it happen when you cache audio. You're going to have <laughs> uh, a demon be summoned for a little bit. This green line has to fill up before uh, you're going to hear that happen correctly. I didn't know that when I put this down here, she's going to get distracted by it, but it looks pretty cool. So the, the gingerbread people pop up. So everything we had done, we did here. <laughs> and uh, and she, the reception... She lost her train of thought by it, which is, I think, a pretty cool thing right there. So, all right, we have this going on. Now, I'm going to take that, Control-C, Control-V, and then just duplicate these over. So that way it just keeps playing. Now, you can have that looping... Um, which would be better if you made a looping animation. I did not, and you can see I'm suffering from that now. Um, so I have all this going on, and then let's give her a name, okay? Let's create one of these things. I'm gonna give it a color of, let's say white, and then Lindsay? Lindsay? I see a Diana. Cookie McCookster is 
I think her name. Um, so I'm gonna give her some festive colors to this. Cookie McCookster. And so I have some text going on here. Now, I could take these and whoop, I'll show you guys some more advanced stuff on this next class on how to add the text. I don't want to give too many different effects pieces in here, but let's say that we're going to just leave this one in here for this piece. So now that I have this, I have my bumper intro and I have my interview. To get them all into one piece, we'll still have other parts of this one too. I'm going to go into composition, new composition, yet again, and I'm going to make a final composition. And let's get Cookie McCookster in here. So we'll bring in uh, the interview. And we'll also bring in our bumper intro. So now that we have both of these things, I'm going to move the interview back more. <laughs> Okay, so we don't need that to go any further than that. We can end that. So I'm just gonna left click, drag this over. And then now, let's add a transition. So we're gonna go into our effects and close that and look at transition. I'm gonna add, let's do uh, the light white. Now we need to have footage underneath this. If we don't, we won't be able to see it. So I'm going to go to the end and then turn on completion to 100%. And we'll key that. And then we'll go back in time. And then we will turn that down. So now... So everything we had done, we did here. Oh, and, and there's um, how we can make a transition the into from all of our, our guests, thing. All we have family and friends the cookie amazement thing they going on the bottom. And then we have text, which I'll, I'm going to give you guys how to animate text as a whole tutorial because there's some fun stuff we can do with that. So this is kind of, it's piecing together. The next step is the transition into the actual thing. I've seen Josh has got a cool gingerbread house, all that stuff going on. So that's what we're going to show. We're going to show an illustration of that and fade that into the final piece. And then that's it. So we're getting there.